I'm Dylan Adams. I am a patent attorney at the firm of Davis Wright Tremaine. And in my practice, I help uh, companies of all sizes to protect their ideas and inventions with patents. And in doing so, I have to understand the technology as well, if not better than my clients. And like, unlike a lot of attorneys, I have a technical background. And actually, to be a patent attorney, you're required to have a technical background, which for me includes electroengineering, biochemistry, and molecular biology. I have experience with drafting technical documents related to AI, so I understand AI in that sense, and also uh, kind of in my graduate work as well. So how does AI fit into my practice as a patent attorney? So what I do is I help uh, folks plan patent protection and then also build the patent portfolios. And so it would probably help to kind of step back and kind of go over the patent process and that will give you a sense of how AI fits into my practice and sort of fits into law in general. So like I said, we draft these very detailed descriptions of how technology is made and used. And sometimes this is gonna be upwards of 100 pages or so. It's very detailed descriptions of how the technology is made and used. So we file these applications at the United States Patent and Trademark Office. They wait in line for one to three years before examination begins. And then it begins an examination where the examiner is gonna pick up the application and do a prior art search to determine whether what is claimed is new and non-obvious in view of the prior art. So this kind of starts a negotiation and it's a natural part of the examination process of patents. So you think of it like Pawn Stars or American Pickers where you're haggling over getting the best price. That's a good analogy with the, uh, the patent process. So the way it works is the examiner is gonna formalize the rejections in what is called an office action and, and mail that to us. And then we have about six months to file a response and say, well, you were wrong about this or maybe we need to amend the application. And then the examiner will probably send us another off section. We have to do another response. This back and forth can go on for sometimes months, sometimes years. So it's a, it's a long process. Okay, so hopefully at some point, the examiner is convinced that what you have is new and non-obvious over the prior art, the application is allowed, and then you pay an issue fee, and then the application grants as a patent. So where, do, where does AI fit into all of this? So one is generating document templ templates. So a good example would be during that examination process, we get that office action. We have really good AI that can scrub the office action, find all the relevant data, and generate templates for us so we don't have to have staff do that or we don't have to do it as attorneys at our absurdly high billing rates. We can just focus on doing the, the highly technical things. Also, just general document generation. So there's a lot of information that needs to be put into forms, and this can be done automatically with good programs that we have. And probably most importantly is in document editing. So for instance, there are a lot of requirements for how you have to specifically format things, how you, ha how you have to word things in terms of patent applications. Um, and, 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 and there's like a lot of laws and a lot of regulations that you have to comply with. We have some great AI programs that we use to scrub these documents and make sure that we're complying with relevant laws and regulations. But also, there's a lot of case law throughout, you know, since the 1800s that says using certain words or certain phrases, saying things in a certain way can be really detrimental to our clients or can actually be really beneficial. And so we have great AI programs as well that we use to scrub our documents to make sure that we're putting our best foot forward for our clients and not using terms that are gonna severely limit their patent protection and that are gonna be expanding that as much as possible given the relevant case law. So what about the future of AI in, in law? So we're at a point now where, and, and you're probably familiar with this, where it's really basic. You know, you're having things like templates that are generated automatically, things where you are scrubbing documents, even basic things like, like, like spell check, an advanced version of those sort of things. But AI is gonna move into doing more of the heavy lifting in generating these documents. So in, in the legal world, so I talked about drafting these office actions or drafting the, the detailed patent applications. I think AI at some point is gonna be doing more of that. It's gonna be starting off where AI and people will work in concert. I will be working with an AI, giving it prompts, tell, you know, telling it what to draft instead of drafting every single sentence myself. And it'll progress to points where it'll get basic prompts and then it'll be able to draft maybe a whole patent application or a whole office action response that then we would you know, go through and we would scrub and make sure that it is, is something that we're okay with. And that's sort of gonna be the, the direction of things. Similar, similar I, I think at some point, AI is going to be able to make live legal arguments. 
um, and at the very least is going to be able to assist with making live legal arguments. A good example here is, so in that examination process, we will sometimes, we'll call up the examiner, have an interview and say, hey, you're not quite understanding our technology or the, the description that we're using, or maybe you've cited prior art against us and maybe you're not quite understanding that prior art and let's kind of discuss this. I can see where, where, where AI is going to be able to actually make arguments or at least discuss these things with the examiner and in some ways do it better than people are going to be able to do because the AI is going to know, it, you know, be able to have access to all of these documents and cite to specific portions um, or at the very least is you know, in initial stages will be able to help us say, hey, you know, the examiner said this, maybe you should, you know, here, here's a talking point or here's a portion of the description. Here are some point, parts of the drawings that you should reference and use it as something sort of on the back end, you know, the AI isn't actually making uh, points themselves. Also, just sort of with the general admin side of things, we're, we're going to move from having folks, for instance, who are doing a lot of filing, doing a lot of uh, organization of things. We're, we're going to have virtual assistants who are going to be able to help us with those things and really streamline the, the administration process. AI is really, really good on the software side. Um, I recently saw an article where somebody, they, they scribbled on a napkin an, a, 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 an interface for a website took a picture of it, and then uh, it was chat GTP4 was able to build a working website just based off of the snapshot of some scribbles on a cocktail napkin. And this is just the early stages of things. So that's kind of my, my take and my perspective uh, being, uh, being, a, being a patent attorney. Thanks.